I go in there, I want to be in tip-top condition and great health. Finally, the fight was canceled. Hagler was livid. And he was going to make $2 million. He turned down $2 million. In the first beginning, Ray, he started complaining about his little baby pinky. You know how many people will give a million dollars for that little baby pinky? They cut that thing off. And come April 15th, and three rounds, I would be the greatest. And Tommy said, I'm going to be laying down there, and his hands are going to be raised. I feel almost the same way, but when the smoke clears, because I'm coming out smoking, as you know, but uh, when the smoke clears, it'll be my hands that'll be raised. After three long years, the war of words will be settled amidst the neon of Las Vegas, Nevada. Hagler and Hearns have descended upon Caesar's Palace to end their dispute and treat the public to the fight of the year. The hype is over and the drama begins as we await the opening bell between two great champions, marvelous Marvin Hagler and Thomas Hearns. And the entourage... Ah, uh, yeah, that is a teaser because you know what is about to go down. What's going on with you out here in the fight world today? We continue to pay homage to the greatest middleweight to ever have done it in this era. So for those of you who had the opportunity to watch, you knew exactly what I'm speaking of. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. So with no further ado. It's time to box with our special today, Hagler versus Hearns. And we hope you take the time to truly appreciate the depths of what this fight will bring. There'll be so many things coming to you in this show. And we were going to get into some serious trivia as we go. We're going to definitely speak specifically to some of the things that were going on in that era. So for those of you who are alive or have done your box in history, you're going to really, truly appreciate this segment on the fight show. My name is Eric A. Bradley. For those of you who have never watched this channel, boy, you are late to the dance. This is the fight show where we break the fight world down round by round. Back to the topic at hand, the fight. And for all of you who are new, we really appreciate you taking the time to watch because Marvin Hagler deserves it. The boxing community truly deserves positive attention, and that's what we focus on doing. So, you know, with no further ado, we're about to get it in. And as we go on, we'll show a little more of the behind the scenes of this fight. It's not been really done this way, and that's why we're going to bring it. There'll be a few clips of the very, very powerful series that when I was growing up was strong, and it was called Legendary Nights, and it was the behind the scenes. So we're going to go behind the scenes on the behind the scenes with the greatest middleweight fight, arguably the greatest fight in boxing history. Y'all ready to get it in? I got to see where my people are from right now. Uh, this is always a powerful part of the show. Where are my people out in the UK? I want to hear from my people out here. Look at here. What's going on, kickboxer Fashad? Special shouts out from the fight show. I'm good, brother. It's good to see you. It was a great fight, and it's going to be greater the way we do it here. Just remember. You saw it here live. Special shouts out to Coach Fleming out in Denmark. Denmark, the school of boxing, is representing. Welcome. Yeah, there you go. Way to put it out there, champ. Who else? Where are you from? Make sure I know where you're from. This is the check-in. We always find out. I want to hear from Aussie. I want to hear from the UK. Shout out. And boy, I better not be totally embarrassed by the usa get it popping let's go let's go <laughs> there you go lloyd what's good there go my boys representing special shouts out boy we about to get into this fight it is going down and i know you guys are appreciated welcome on andy welcome to the fight show champ it's good to see you man it's good to see you let me keep going down this list because y'all jumping in kane what's up 
Let's get it. We about to get it, man. 60 seconds. We'll be popping it in. And I want you to enjoy every second because this was fire. And you think it's fire now. You should have seen it then. But boy, the way we're going to deliver it to you, I hope you got some popcorn. I hope you got some pizza. And I hope you got a plan to run it off tomorrow because it's going down. What's going on, William in the house? Shouts out school in the house, kicking it live. I love seeing it. Looking forward to the study. Great. Yes, man. It's all good. When you got to double down in this game, you can't pretend to be about boxing. You got to really, really commit to it. And that's what no matter what profession you're in, you got to triple down on your commitment. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. What's going on, Ricky? Where you from? St. Croix. Wow. Beautiful place, man. Welcome to the fight show. It's good to see you. Western Sydney's in the building. Thank you, Aussie Mike. I knew you'd show up. And those Aussians are, it's 5 a.m. in the morning there. So that goes to show you their commitment. So if you're watching and you're so antsy to see the fight, you got to totally realize this, buddy, about life. You got to pay homage to those who support you. And these are the fans. These are the followers. And without further ado, I always support them. What's going on, Brad? Toledo, welcome. Just south of Motor City, Hitman. So I know, I know who you're pulling for. <laughs> no doubt. Hitman Hearn, special shouts out to Hitman. Hope he has a speedy recovery. He was actually sick when he got the news of this battle uh with uh Marvin Hagler got, you know, what happened and everything he he had heard. And you know, he's probably like his energy changed. Tampa, Florida. Special shouts out to South Florida in the building, John Bonner. Beautiful, man. It's good. Sooner Nation, Oklahoma. Shout out. Let's get it. Let's get it. Bill, watching the fight growing up. This, yeah, mesmerized everybody in the on the entire planet, champ. Welcome. Special shouts out to you, Bill. Welcome to the fight show, champ. Co Coach. Out in VA, VA representing Coach Calvin Sneed. What's up, brother? It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I know you're working. I seen you getting that work in out in the in, on, when you're working with your people outside, you serious about that life. This young man serious about that life. School of boxing. You got to stay around. We gonna we got a good spec little short segment in the show for you guys specifically. Let me see who else got it. Brad, I saw it then. Yeah, it was. I mean, if you if you watched it then, what's up, George Mitchell? Special shouts out to one of my good childhood friends growing up. It's good to see you, brother, man. Always good to break it down on the fight show with my boys. Good to see you. All right. Stefano Ro Rossi. Ah, I'm watching the fight from Italy. Italy in the building. Special shouts. And with no further ado, Let's watch some boxing. Remember, leave your comments. There'll be questions popping up on the screen. Comment below. And I, I got a, a couple of uh, special shouts out for the people who won the trivia. Keep your eyes out for the trivia because during the show, we, we have trivia. So make sure you're getting ready to drop your knowledge. Let's see what your, your history knowledge is because it's good to be, have a good IQ. But history, you know where you're going when you know where you came from. And that's how we get it popping. We out of here. Enjoy the fight. Hagler versus Hearns on the fight show. Thomas Hearns making its way toward the ring here. And Hearns, of course, surrounded by many admirers from the city of Detroit. And there's a good look at Thomas Hearns. Very interesting to note. He was very, very loose when we saw him in his locker room before the fight. Well, Tom was very relaxed, very confident. And uh, he didn't have any test look on his face. He seemed to know exactly where he was and exactly what's going to happen. And so Thomas Hearns looking all business, of course, and it has been the want of marvelous Bob and Hagler to make his, make his opponent wait in the ring. And, of course, everyone having anything to do with this fight will try to avoid just such a circumstance. Got to be a definite case of nerves on both parts here. And Larry Merchant, we talked briefly with Sugar Ray Leonard at the start of this program about just how each man holds up to the big event. This so was an epic time. I don't see any reason to question at this stage of their careers that they can't handle an event of this magnitude and 
that's one of the reasons why it's become such a big event, that they have proven themselves uh, and that everybody expects to see a contest here, uh, like all fights decided on the merits of the fighters, decided by their strength, decided by their styles, decided by their will. Uh, those are the factors that will decide this fight. It's a long trip, Ray, from the locker room into the ring here at Caesars Palace, set up here in the parking lot. What are the thoughts that a fighter has making this long journey through the crowd? Well, there are so many things go through a fighter's mind, especially once he's headed towards the ring. The fact of the matter is, all the things that he say, all the verbal assaults that he's made against his opponent or challenger, well, now he can live up to that. With Thomas, Tommy made a lot of uh, verbal assaults to have and have to do the same thing. But I, people think this will be a full-out process. I think something's going to happen in the very first round because these guys know there's so much at stake. Larry Merchant, let me ask you one thing. There was some speculation during the course of this past week here in Las Vegas that Tommy Hearns might have done some damage to an already injured right hand. Any elaboration on that? I don't know of anything, that, anything that's factual. Everybody knows that he's had some problems along the way with his hands. Uh, you know, he has the build of a thoroughbred. Uh, and Special shouts out, Terry. Billy. The and, uh, Billy's in the building. Hurt. Family and, and as you recall, oh, yeah. he was once laid off for uh, many months because of a hand injury. And I think he wears extra protection for his hand when he's sparring. So Special shouts. Gave, uh, My man, Lloyd, the, in the building. That there was something wrong with the hand. Everything is good, B. Watching boxing here. Saturday here. night. Here. Family here. in the here. house. Here. It's going here. down. Here. And this, of course, is the culmination of 18 years of hard work. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, of course. He had his game face on, Ray, somewhere around Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. And he, and he appeared to be very relaxing. He was able to talk to, to the press and meet with some of the uh, his fans. He's very, very serious about this. No joviality as there was in the locker room of Thomas Hearns a little bit earlier. Marvin Hagler has been business since... Brad, you're about to enjoy a great here. night since you didn't see this live. Let's see what it looks like. Seems to be more in support of the champion than they do the challenger, Thomas Hearns. The crowd is very supportive of Hagler. Um, and another thing to bring out, this fight here, because Hagler searches for recognition, he thought he would get it after Roberto Duran, but I think this fight here has enough significance to give Hagler what he wants and what he desires. People are saying that he was too conservative against Roberto Duran, and you have to have the feeling that tonight he cannot be conservative. He can be. He has to be aggressive. He has to initiate authority right away. And again, Brian, the first round will be a key round to, to pretty much know what's going to happen in the, in the fight. There's a look at the record of Marvelous Marvin Hagler, 62-2. and two. He's got 50 knockouts. This, of course, is 11th title defense. He dearly wants to break the record set by Carlos Monzon. So that is the story of Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Historically, Tommy Hearns has been the faster starter of the two. Well, Tommy has always... All right, so I got a very interesting comment on the screen. Hearns had him in trouble. He had him for, you know, <laughs> that's the thing about boxing, man. Even an inch is 100 miles. It seems that, oh, uh, I almost had him. But that is like climbing Mount Everest with the snow and no shoes on, Doc. It's a lot more to a fight than looking like. That hill was just not going to get climbed. When you got to start breaking your body up into pieces just to slow the man down, it's going to be a very long night. And we're going to break down Chop Chop Fight after this as well. So it's going to be a great show. Continue to drop your comments. Shout out to all of you. Make sure you're watching the bottom of the screen because there will be questions asked. And last week, you know, got, well, this week, one of our winners won over five thousand dollars worth of stuff so this is serious buddy i'm rocking ralph lauren it's going down let's get it in always jumped on top of his, his opponents because he's always overshadows his opponent because of his height and reach advantage there's a look at the tail of the tape and you talk about the reach advantage and it's really not quite as great as you might have expected really only a three eight a three inch to ringside doctors donald romeo flip Omansky, and charles filipini appreciate that the terry for the next event of the evening man this is about to get Richard good i hope you got some snacks Steel. man this is the main event of the night 12... look quick intermission 
For those of you who do not have anything to munch on, you need something to munch on, you need something to sip on, this is about to go down. So if you've never watched this fight, which a lot of you have not, which I'm fine with, it, it's cool, but this is a very, very moot point in history. Things pivoted. Fights stopped happening because of how violent this was. So make sure you got your enjoyment package beside you. I got to grab mine. Get it popping. Round of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Introducing in the red corner the challenger. The WBC Super Welterweight Champion, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing 159 and three quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 40 wins, one defeat, with 34 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Thomas the Hitman Hearn. And in the blue corner, Fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts, weighing 159 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 60 wins, two defeats, two draws, and 50 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hedler. Go. Okay, I gave both fighters their instructions in the dressing room. I'm just cautioning you now. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands, good luck to both of you. As Ray go. said, Tommy Hearns usually likes to establish dominance early in the fight. I expect for that reason that Marvin Hagler will look for a camera gun. Will look to come on and counterpunch at least in this first and perhaps through the first several rounds. Looking for an opening if Hearns opens himself up. The early rounds could really dictate how the. Round one. Hagler, right off the bat, attempting to get inside. He'd love to be able to pin Hearns on the ropes if he can. A more aggressive start by Hagler. Look at him right for the body. Marvin Hagler only wants the body. He bangs Marvin. Oh, Hearns clamped hard with the right hand. Hearns on right the right. Hearns hits him with an uppercut. Hagler, he's hurt. Is hurt. Hagler is stunned. Hearns got inside. Hit him with a right uppercut. Marvin ties him up. Marvin Hagler is still hurt. So it was Hagler coming out like a bullet. A good left by Hagler. But Hearns didn't flinch. Marvin going for the body. Wild first round. Wow, what a shot. And it was Hagler who initiated it, not Thomas Hearns. And a left by Hagler. Hagler. Hearns comes back. Another right. That one stunned Hearns. What a first minute of the fight. Tommy Hearns has been able to drop that right hand in, and it has hurt Hagler, a surprise to many people. Another right hand from Hearns. Hearns moving. Hagler still pursuing. Comes in with a right. Missing with a left hook. Here's where I believe Hagler should turn to righty. He could block that right hand easier, and he would land his own left hook. Hearns with a devastating punch. Swelling near Hagler's left eye. Again, Tommy trying to come inside the hands of oh, Hagler. Low blow by Hearns. Hagler's still looking for the body. A right by Hagler. Good right got in. He has Hearns where he'd love to keep him on the ropes, but Tommy comes off oh. easily. Another good right by Hearns. Hagler is now shaking those right hands off, though, Al. He was stung a little early, and he's normally a slow starter. He's also bleeding. Hagler is cut. Hagler is cut. Bridge of the nose. Hagler hitting him low. Banging the body well. He is taking shots to the head. He blocks that right. Hearns tries to come up with the uppercut. And Hagler ties him up with a minute to go in a wild first round. Wow. Marvin with a good left hand. There's blood all over Marvin Hagler's face. Can't tell where it's coming from. I thought it started from the bridge of the nose originally. The blood all over the face of Hagler here in round one. But Hagler has him on the ropes. Hagler working on him. Hagler relentless, but Hearns trying to box his way out. Half a minute to go in round one. How far 
can this one go? That's where he's working his pace. This is where Hagler wants him, but Hearns counterpunching off those ropes fairly effectively. Tremendous first round. Hagler pinning him to the rope, working on him, but Hearns uppercutting again. Hagler bloody. A tremendous sensational first round as Hearns gets hurt. Hearns got stunned. Hagler was stunned early in the round. Great first round. Wow. Incredible. Perhaps one of the best in middleweight history. Woo! That's round one. And I got to address your statement here. This is Terry Hill. Terry Hill said that, you know, you thought that Hearns would use angles. Man, let me tell you something. I don't care how many angles you use with a lawnmower. It's still going to cut your foot off. Think of this. Marvin Hagler came out conventional stance against Sugar Ray Leonard and John the Beast Mugabe. Why would he have done that? And then come out Southpaw on Tommy Hearn. So think of these little things strategically. Why does a fighter in their training camp, why does the coach strategically say, we're going to go out as a Southpaw against a guy who has the best right hand in boxing? Why? I'm explaining it to me and to you guys. So it's very clear. The first thing you want to do from someone with a rifle is suffocate his gun. So the best way to suffocate the right hand is to position yourself when you are in a position of boxing and you have gone past learning technical stuff and skills. Now you've learned what we call craft and wrinkles. You learn to take things away from people. So it's unconventional. So what you saw was totally weird, was totally extreme elite level fighting. So second round, we're getting ready to go into that. Continue to watch the bottom of your screen and we'll answer any questions that you may have during this fight. Why would someone do what or question the footwork? But just watch Tommy Hearns whenever he strikes him with that right hand in this second round. And tell me if you notice anything different. Let's get it popping. Over every punch that's thrown. Hagler 
despite that least disadvantage, has been able to get into Hearn more so than I think most people expected. For one simple reason, good left hook by Hagler. He took the best Hearns could offer, and he did come in. He's, he's getting through that right hand, even though he's getting hit with it. Halfway through round two. Who want the smoke, man? <laughs> Who wants that smoke? Now, that's what I'm talking about. I see some answers popping in. Uh, the question was, what punch is affecting Hearns the most? The reason why we started the series, It's Time to Box, because we wanted you all to know who are out here taking all types of skills off our timeline of master boxing to try to implement it into your training which is just like the effectiveness of doing that is just like taking a bowl of cereal and not taking the milk with you. It's null and void. We started that series to show you that one skill mastered many different ways is much more effective trying to learn a thousand different things and can only apply a little time. It's time to box is based upon the jab. And when you go into this next round, what you're going to notice that you didn't really, I don't see any answers there. The jab was what changed the complexity is Marvin Hagler as a mauler known as, but the thing about it is he had a very, very, very sophisticated jab. He knew how to throw it so many ways. He would give you a conventional jab. He would give you a right hand jab from the South Pole stance. There's one other fighter that fights that way right now. Very good switch hitter. Drop him in the comment box and you'll position yourself to win uh, a partial scholarship that we're offering this time to the School of Boxing, valued at $3,200. So make sure that you um, know your knowledge of boxing. Let's get ready to wind this thing up. And then once we get done with the next round, we're going to go to some of the statements. All right. And continue to watch the bottom of the screen because we're vying to help you take your boxing knowledge to the next level and stop stealing lucky charms and get the entire kit and caboodle. Let's watch some boxing. Emmanuel Stewart, one of the best to ever do it. Shocked that that man initiated this war right from the beginning. 
And you know what? I thought he would do well as a righty. He has done better as a southpaw, and he may stay at that. Again, Stewart telling Hearns to box. As you say, though, Hagler turning it into a street fight. Correct. Good one, Brad. Listen, Marvin Hagler has been rough inside. He's thrown some low blows. He has thrown some elbows. Don't push, don't push. But you know what? Now the right is getting there, but it's not hurting Hagler. We've got our answer, I think, to some extent. Tommy has been has been hard pressed to hurt him with that right. Stunned him early, but not in the last round or two. Very early. Adam Sun has him cut. But it was Hagler doing the damage in round two. And now just as we thought might happen. Tommy Hearns was hurt early, so he is boxing. Now, he has good boxing skills. He did this against Sugar Ray. Can Hagler get to him in this posture? Some people thought, as he oh, again oh, becomes oh. off balance, some thought that if, if Hearns stayed outside and stayed on his bicycle, it would become a dull fight with Marvin chasing him. But Marvin has been able to corner him, and when Marvin gets him in the corner, he is roughhousing him well. Again, Hagler is all bloodied. Time is called by Richard Steele to send Hagler over to the ring doctor. He's calling the ring doctor in. The last thing in the world Hagler wants is the fight to be stopped. The doctor looks at it. Back comes Hagler with a wild left hand. It has to be impeding his vision with the right eye. You never know it, though. Tremendous right. Hearns appears rubbery. He well, appeared that way in the second round. You know, Richard Steele is breaking these fighters very quickly. That's uncharacteristic of him. It's hurting Hagler because he wants to work inside. Carnes is smiling, but he's taking shots. Another right hand. Hearns turns his back, takes another right. Hearns in deep trouble again. Hearns is down. Hearns is down in the third round and on his back. And he's not going to beat the count. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. side observers Marvel all right now this is what I'm talking about when it comes down to the skill set of these type fighters man at this level you, you your conventional wisdom and and this is no knock on any of you but you all think you know boxing at least you know it more than people who just play tennis but the conventional wisdom is why didn't he just do what Sugar Ray did? As I saw one of the comments here, speaking specifically to that Sugar Ray was able to do it, Sugar Ray Leonard watched Hagler. He was training for Hagler for that entire time that he was off. And he finally made a decision when Hagler was fighting against the Beast Mugabe in the fight prior. I mean, to Hagler destroying this fight, then he got to that point where he knew that he had to do something epic. And so when he took on Sugar Ray Leonard after beating John the Beast Mugabe, who had the biggest reputation, he knew that that would be the thing to close the books. But conventional wisdom tells you that, oh, man, he should just do this. He should do just do that. Sugar Ray Leonard, conditioning wise, was the most conditioned fighter back in that day. Just like Floyd was and Pacquiao was and Ali was. Those, uh, Thomas Hearn was never known for his conditioning. He broke his hand in the first round. So I was making it kind of what the topic was question what punch was he using inside of that ring? His whole entire game had to change. I mean, Cass broken. I mean, he broke his hand on Hagler's head. So he had to wing that left hook, which he was landing that left hook several times. But when I try to explain to you that some of you have trained guys who just come into the gym with weight muscle and they want to fight guys that are their size. 
Hearns was not a 60 pounder yet. Sugar Ray Leonard had been retired for years. He was a 60 pounder. The weight settled in. And so the density of his body is different. So now he's able to withstand punches better. Hearns, although tall, his weight had not settled in. So that's kind of what you see. But the best part of this show is about to come up because we're going to go in the behind the scenes, as I promised you. But we have a three minute intermission because I have to send a special shout out to all of my brothers in the school of boxing and some of the people who are new. So I have to take this time and do that. So bear with us. But remember what I said at the beginning of the broadcast is you must pay homage to those who support you and uh, find yourself in a circle that is behind you and supports you regardless. People that build you up and I build those guys back up. And this is the thing. So special shouts out to my man, James Chapman. Um, Cottonwood, Arizona is in the building. Deshaun West, Sante or Jante, South Carolina. Welcome, brother, to the School of Boxing, where you get your masters in boxing. James House, Montreal, Quebec. Welcome to the school, TSOB for life. Jesus Martinez, he's from Illinois, Kankakee. I've never heard of that place, but Illinois I have. Special shouts out and welcome to the school. Mel Yaz Winslow, Arizona. Arizona's in the building, and so is the School of Boxing with you. Mustafa Taylor, Los Angeles, California. We got the West Coast. We got the East Coast. We go across the pond. We are global. This is what you call a power fraternity. Shouts out to you, Mustafa. Welcome to the school. Justin, Eucabia. That is DeSoto. I can't, Texas. Texas in the building. Special shouts out to you from the School of Boxing and all of my brothers from the School of Boxing. Make sure you give love to these individuals as well. Justin, Eucabia. Oh, I said that. Thomas Hensley, Las Vegas. Vegas in the building. It goes to show you, you're right in the home of the pound for pound, former king, but you're getting the education. And this is where you get your education in boxing. Thomas Hensley, special shouts out from the school. Luis Hernandez, uh, Williamsburg. All right, New York. I love the fact that we got many more New Yorkers. So some of you are reaching out and asking, do we have a gym in New York? You asked if we got gyms in LA, Philly, but we got trainers there. So if you got these trainers, these trainers work off of our curriculum and you will get just the most utmost skill set teaching with these individuals. So continue to follow and ask where we are and we'll make sure that you can go up to the website. We suggest that you go up to the website anyway and kind of look at where we position the people and where we are on the globe and what we offer because you know if this is awesome imagine what we got on the website that's www.masterboxingllc.com now lewis hernandez special shouts tish houston from atlanta georgia the atl is in the building and last week's trivia which we're about to do after the next segment is john hiles who was very, very aggressive on the feed last week. And he won over $5,000 worth of things, you know, plus cash. You will be collecting everything at one bundle this weekend, champ. And we suggest that you pay attention and understand where your blessings are from or at, because that's what we're here to do. We're not here to just show our face. We're here to bless you. And that's what we're doing. And follow the feed Look at the feed and let's get ready. Special shouts out to Sheed Sneed out in VA, man. School of Boxing, your message today is I watch you 
and this is my last 30 second plug. I've watched you. I've combed over some of the content that you're producing. Continue to produce it because you will get better and you will continue to stamp your place in boxing. And I will continue to edify you as you stamp your place in boxing. And that's one of the things that we're going to give you. We're going to put wheels on your bicycle. We're going to put wheels on your bike and make it a car. We're going to take your car and we're going to turn it into a train. And once we get you rolling down the tracks, we're going to take your train and turn it into a plane. And that's just in 2021. So for those of you who are winning these trivia things, who get an opportunity to get into the school of boxing, you'll see why is iron sharpens iron. Let's finish watching this. It's so amazing what's about to jump off. Let's see what is going on with my man, Jim Lampley. Thomas Marvin Hagler and Thomas Hitman Hearns entered the ring at the same level of high risk commitment in 1985. Their flames met and within seconds built a bonfire. Despite the support of the Petronellis, Hagler simply didn't feel respected inside the ring. So he went to a court of law to get what he couldn't get in the court of public opinion. Marvin wanted to be called Marvelous. We tried to educate the general public to the name Marvelous Marvin. We thought we had done it until we ran up against the guy who was in charge of ABC Sports. And he said, if you want us to use the name Marvelous Marvin, go to court. So I rose to the challenge. And I asked the probate court judge to change the name of Marvin Nathaniel Hagler to Marvelous Marvin. It wasn't like he grew up always wishing his mom had called him Marvelous, you know? I mean, it was a need inside him. I really felt as though I never got the respect of which I deserve uh, in the beginning part of my career. And I just remember when Joe Frazier had said, you know, you got three strikes against you, one you're southpaw, two you're good, and three you're black. While people were hesitant to face Hagler, the lanky Thomas Hearns didn't have the look of a future world champion. He looked like you could blow him over, but out of nowhere, he possessed this punch. And it was almost like there was Tommy's body and then there was this right hand that was from another person. It was demonic. When Tommy hit people with his right hand, most of his career, they disappeared like those people in that uh, Star Wars, you know, they just, they vaporized. That right hand, it was it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. He hit it with some right hand. The way that he struck with such deadly force and precision accuracy, it was only natural to give him some kind of devastating name. Ring Magazine put him on the cover in a gangster suit with a, with a machine gun calling him the hitman. In 1982, a retired Sugar Ray Leonard refused a rematch with Thomas Hearns and also brushed aside a showdown with Hagler. A fight with this great man, this great champion, marvelous Marvin Hagler could be one of the greatest fights in the history of boxing. But unfortunately, it'll never happen. Hagler and Hearns turned their attention to each other and were set to meet in May of 1982. But an injury to Hearns' right hand forced a postponement. I've found out that the fight with Hearns was off and he, I've never seen him so angry. I mean, he just wanted to fight this guy so badly. He started complaining about his little baby pinky. You know how many people will give a million dollars for that little baby pinky? For a million dollars, I cut that thing off. <laughs> for two years, Hagler would continue his reign as middleweight champ, while Thomas Hearns, now fighting at 154 pounds, would put Hagler on notice. His shocking second round knockout of the legendary Roberto Duran sounded the return of the hitman. Oh, oh he's, he's, out, out. he's out, he's out. He was out before he hit the can. If there's a sweet spot in boxing, it was that night where Hearn's fist met the point of Roberto Duran's chin. He was out cold, just boom, out. He looked like 140 pounds of pancake batter, just splat, down he went. When I hit Roberto Duran, it was like it was just a thrust of power just went the ground. After humiliating Duran, a confident Thomas Hearns would move up to the 160-pound weight class, and the long-awaited showdown was set. Hostilities between the two fighters grew during a 20-city press tour. Keep that belt by your bed, because uh, it'll be the last time you see it. When he would pull a little baseball cap on war across the top, you knew, and I think Thomas Hearns knew, that it was about war with 
with Hagler. It's a mental toughness, and uh, that's what I feel. War, that's what's on my mind. Marvin was even more quiet than Tommy and, and said less. So in order to make the press conferences interesting, Thomas Hearns had to be the outgoing, talkative one. And come April 15, and three rounds, yeah. I would be the greatest. I finished hitting him with one, two, three. I want to back off him just a little bit so I can hit him with four. Just back off. <laughs> Seeing his ugly face every day, I mean, you get tired, man. <laughs> you know, and then he had that big mouth. He's telling what he's going to do. He's going to knock my ball head off. I already know who the winner is. In the dressing room, I was saying to myself, I was thinking in my mind that in order for me to win this fight, I got to go right out there and take it to him and get rid of him. The fight would be Thomas Hearns' first in the middleweight division, which dictated the strategy of Hagler. He would try to impose his strength on Hearns from start to finish. He'll have to start, start earlier because uh, he's, uh, he's as ready as he's ever been. He's the best shape he's ever been in his life. He's, uh, he'll knock out Tommy Hearns. Goody called it. Goody said, Tommy's going to come gunning right out after you. Just make a street fight out of it. He'll come right out at you and you just come right out with him. People just saw two, two trains ready to collide. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. I think when people saw them come in, Hagler and Hearns, and they looked at these two men who sometimes lived in Sugar Ray Leonard's shadow, and they said they are desperate to win this fight because their legacy could depend on this. And the entourage now of Thomas Hearns making its way toward the ring here. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, of course. He had his game face on Ray somewhere around Thursday. Everybody expects to see a contest here decided by their strength, decided by their styles, decided by their will. This was going to be high megaton action. One guy who's called a hitman, and the other guy who walks around talking about destroying destruction no matter what you ask him. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. I suddenly notice Marvin Hagler is beating himself up in his face. Ed Schuyler, the Associated Press, said later, if the introductions had gone one more minute, Hagley would have stopped himself. When they got in the ring, I mean, I could not believe the tension that was in that fight. I'm just cautioning you now. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands, good luck to both of you. When Marvin Hagler came out of his corner, he was carrying with him all the frustrations and broken dreams of his whole life. And he was going to take them all out on somebody else. We're underway. And the pace is up tempo right at the opening bell. The moment in that fight was in the first 10 seconds of the fight. You know, I mean, you couldn't get any more up. And it went on for the first three minutes of that fight. Tremendous pace in the first round. I expect this, Barry. Both guys are going at it. Hurts getting the better of it right now. I dropped, I stopped, I stopped, I was hitting, I was hitting with triple I, man, I was trying to hit him with everything. The second round, these guys would definitely pace themselves. There has been no boxing at all, just fighting him. I went to jump right on top of him, not giving him time to think, not giving him time to use his reach or that right hand. combinations were unbelievable. They just both were just bashing each other to the point where I felt like sweat coming out of the TV screen. Now that was the right hand of Tommy Hearns and it did catch Hacker, but he didn't take a backward step there. This is still the first round. Blood on the face of Marvin Hacker again. We can't quite tell where it's coming from. Everything was in fast motion. It was so quickly. Uh, I, I, I forgot how many rounds it went. Writers from the New York Times and Los Angeles Times and papers from all over the world, they've got their mouths open. This may be the most brutal even round you've ever seen in boxing. At the end of the first round of that fight, I remember thinking, could there ever have been a better round in the history of boxing? The first round ended, Tommy's told me my right hand is broke. 
I hit him a little too high up over his head. Just crushed my right hand. He had a hard head. I mean, I couldn't believe how hard his man's head was. I, I said, man, I see why you keep your head bald and shaved bald, because you got, you got a weapon here. You got a hard weapon. When I think off to the back, the most exciting three rounds in boxing, and he did that with a broken hand, it just starts to realize how much courage and determination he had. Broken or not, it was Hagler's ability to withstand Hearns' best weapon that shifted the fight's momentum. After he hit me with the right hand, I think that was his best shot. And I knew for myself that in order for you to knock me out, you better hit me with that ring post because I ain't going nowhere. Nobody could take Hearns' punches. When Hagler shook it off, I remember thinking, the fight's over. Bang, just like that. In the second round, with Hearns' right hand already broken, Marvin Hagler would gain the advantage. That was a hook. Good left hook, and Hearns okay. left his feet. Hearns no, is hurt. That was a hook in back. Hearns, Hearns is definitely hurt. Trying to weather the storm here in round two. Big round for Marvin Hagler. In the third round, blood coming from a cut in the middle of Hagler's forehead came to the attention of referee Richard Steele. And now, we're gonna get a moment for the doctor to come in as that cut just opened up. I took Marvin Hagler to the doctor and the doctor looked at the cut and allowed it to go on. It's not Marvin, you're cut. No, it's not Marvin, it's sight, let him go. I couldn't understand where the cut came from because I don't think it was from a right hand. It wasn't blood over my eyes and I couldn't understand why the referee was trying to step in and give Tommy more time to rest. In the back of his mind, I'm sure, sensed that here we go again, they're gonna find some way to take away from me what I've earned. I'll decide if I can't go on. He knew he had to do something to, to take it into his own hands. I think his great quote was, uh, you know, he saw blood and he turned into a bull. You remember the game Pac-Man. And so if I just keep, arr, 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 and sooner or later, I'm gonna catch you. the absolute moment of his life and, and he goes after Hearns with everything he has and he catches him behind the ear. And then Tommy went down in a sort of weird fashion, like a, a beach umbrella that's been caught by the wind. He goes down and I'm counting. Thomas Hearns' heart is just big as he is. He gets up and claps in my arm. It's over. I love the knockout, but I, I believe that if Tommy would have got up in that fight there, I believe that I never really want to hurt anybody in the ring or kill anybody, but I believe that he was really going to be hurt. For Marvin Hagler, this was the peak of his 12-year career. I told you I was going to eat him up like Pat, man. I figured once I get through the right hand, then it was all mine. Made us all stand 10 feet high. We picked him up, walked around the ring with him. He's our champ. He's finally... Uh, got the recognition he should have had. I don't think until that moment that any or many of us realized how important it was to Marvin Hagler to be considered a great fighter. I told you a long time ago that I was a great fighter. You said, not yet, not yet, you said. You still gotta prove yourself. Well, did I do that tonight? This night, Hagler got all he deserved. He had worked for this night and for this moment. He had to decide at some point, how much is this worth to me? And he decided it was worth a lot. And, uh, and he was rewarded. It's a great thing. Boom. Was that not epic? Errol Spence. Crawford. Boy, you guys have a serious pair of shoes to fill out. Holla if you hear me walking around, ducking one another. <laughs> and those are the shoes you got to feel when you're talking about pound for pound being mentioned in the lineage of the history of this boxing era. This was the era that you are judged against. And you got to think about this. This isn't about you. 
This is about this. This has already happened. The story is already mapped. 30 years later, the conversation is still this. Excuse me. We are here today celebrating the fight that still has not been superseded because these guys today, they just be talking and these promotional companies just be missing the boat. Joshua Wilder, when they both were undefeated, missed the boat, still playing games. This game got too much of the smoke and mirrors, and that's why we here on the fight show to bring you the real stuff. The media is a bunch of bubbly cats that have no understanding of the boxing life in which we go behind that banner and close that door in the sweat the blood, the sacrifice is misunderstood for what these guys say on the mic. You will never get the honest truth from a fighter because what goes behind those doors stay behind those doors. It's just like Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in the fight game stays inside of the fight game walls. So when you get that stuff that you are being fed out here, it's all smoke and mirrors. Nobody's going to give you the real stuff that's going on. So all of those articles you're reading, all of that video promos and stuff you're seeing, it's crap. That's why we came here to give you the authentic. Not only do we do that, we show you exactly what the game is about, what it looks like from the inside out. And for those guys who are in the school of boxing, they understand. You're seeing it. You're seeing real stuff. This was a moment. That cannot be duplicated, but yet everybody wants to be claimed or proclaimed the pound for pound. So it's a, it's an unfortunate situ situation, but together as we are building this power brand for everyone to have a voice, like I'm giving you a voice right now, it's 200,000. We got to give ourselves a tip our caps to Master Boxing page that just surpassed 200,000 followers yesterday. Shouts out to you for clicking follow when you did. You are one of the people that we are set up, uh, celebrating right now because without you, there is no us and we appreciate you. So for those of you who just popped in just to watch a little bit of the Hagler fight, we send love and positive vibes your way as well. But if you really, really understand why we're here, you'll understand that this isn't just a place to watch a fight. This is a place to embrace and digest the fight game at large. And that's why we are called The Fight Show. Holler if you hear me. Share the posts. Hashtag war for Marvin Hagler. Share it into a group. Share it on your timeline. Hashtag war. This is a tribute to the greatest middleweight who was involved in several of the greatest fights, epic battles of all times. And this week has been a special dedication to marvelous Marvin Hagler. No, I'm not usually doing a fight show like this on a Saturday night, but he dedicated and tributed everything to us and we're doing the same to him they always say give people their flowers when they're alive well i made sure people knew about Hagler when he was alive and i talked that stuff because i know what guys like that go to he he pushed the blue collar game to the next level so the bernard hopkins and all of these guys who didn't have big permeating brands could really develop and get some of that money to secure their family wealth. And now they have. How? Oh, wow. What a fight. Yeah. How powerful was the right hand? Boom. Yeah. See, and this is what I was saying. Tommy's uh, Hagler spoke specifically inside of that little clip saying I had to take away that right hand. So he came out as Southpaw because that's strategic. I got to suffocate that right hand. And you know, I never even really remember hearing that clip, but, you know, I knew all this stuff, so I pass it along to you. Special shouts out to all of you for taking the time to chime in and see this. Man, the feed is going crazy. I'm getting all of your comments up here. State facts, man. That's what it is. Renee, Box, Young, 
special shouts out to you, brother, for watching the fight show. Uh, Bill, you're welcome. My man, 200,000. Well deserved, Master Boxing. Yeah, because we're giving you authentic stuff. You can't find no smoke and mirrors and that bubbly crap anywhere on our timeline. Period, point blank. You can go back to day one and all you saw is that raw. And that's what we're giving you. Ain't no coach out here who's coaching fighters on no matter what level they're coaching them on can look at and shoot a hole in nothing that we do because I done walked in their shoes. I done been down that path. And when it comes down to boxing, I am boxing. And you are boxing now because the closer you get to the pure raw, the closer you'll be to the rawest. And that's why I always edify these guys out in the school of boxing. Special shouts out to my brothers in the school of boxing. Terry Hill, a man back to you, brother. Look, you see, those guys come up there in suits. So I've been flexing the suits for you because the game is going to the next level. They want to play boxing. You don't play boxing. Talk about what you really know about. Go read about novels and talk about stuff. But when it comes down to this game, this game, people sacrifice their lives. We lost so many fighters because they are caught up in the game inside of boxing. We don't want that. And with your support, we are turning that tide. We're pushing the yard line. So continue to take those posts, share them. All of my guys out here really, really got my appreciation because I see a lot of you trainer, trainers out there and you coaches, you're looking at the timeline. You're trying to get better. Keep on working. Keep on pushing. And for those of you in the school who are putting out that work, keep on doing it. You will only get better next year or next season at this time. You're going to be even better. And uh, I encourage you to continue to push it. And the envelope will not stop filling with blessings when you're doing it the right way. I got two questions that we're going to go. It's a couple of fights that's coming up, and I just want to see you guys weigh in And because I want you all on the record. First of all, we got one of the more uh, flashy styles coming up against one of the best fighters in the game today, pound for pound, and I'm looking for Canelo to be in one of these mega fights one day. That's really mega. I'm, I just feel his battle is coming. And I want to see that. But who will win against Canelo versus Saunders? And how? Leave that in the comment box. The, the question that I put on the screen, who was Hagler? Who was Hagler's fight prior to Hearns? Was the money question tonight for the win of the trivia to get that school of boxing partial and make sure that you drop it in the comment box. You'll get a love sign beside your name. Make sure we get your email and we're going to bless you. And uh, that's, like I said, over $3,200 worth of freaking uh, blessings that we're giving you. And that's what we do. Constantly try to help you take your game to the next level. Canelo versus Saunders. Put it in the comment box. Let me see what you know about boxing because the fight is in May. It's going down. Cowboy Stadium. We will be covering it live. We might be in the building. I know we're going to be at the next Tyson jump off. So fight show will be killing it. Now, a guy who we had on the show, George Cambosis versus Lopez. Drop your comment down. I want your prediction on the record because when we have George Cambosis on the show again, I want him to know who we going to pull out and we going to pick your whole card because that's what we do, man. We just have a great time. Special shouts out to Chop Chop Corley who went over to the BKB and fought bare knuckle brawling last night. He came up short, but he had a magnificent performance. He stopped himself after the fourth round. He just said, no, nah, I'm good. I know my body. He didn't, it was no need, but he didn't come away all scathed or anything like those guys do. Chop Chop show an, uh, an, an immaculate boxing prowess over there they had to do what they had to do just suffocate them and grab them scratch and claw just to stay afloat but chop chop was a monster in there and special shouts out because nobody goes over there into a brand new sport and just does four full rounds man so uh keep holding your head up continue to build your brand support chop chop we will have them on the show 
Chop Chop will be coming into one another of our clinics. We're going to have Brandon as well, Brandon Adams, WBO champ. This is what we do in the School of Boxing. We will have a conditioning training clinic for the coaches so they can be educated. And we will also have a skills clinic. So we have former world champions, current world champions, Hall of Famers, first ballot. That's what we do in the School of Boxing. Those are the things you don't see on the timeline. So if you're thinking about the school, take the time to go up to the schoolofboxing.com and just look at it, man. How bad can it be? You know, holler at your boy. Last couple of comments, and then we're going to get out of here because it's a beautiful time in history. Special shouts out to everybody in the Hagler family. Epic battle, Brad. Yes, it was, man. I think it was the fight of the past 50 years. I don't think anything was close to that. Uh, and ended in a knockout. I don't think anything's close to that. Yet Canelo is so seasoned and experienced. He will cut the ring off and work the body's chin. Yeah, probably Canelo at round seven. I don't know if you can knock him out. That dude is very slick. Remember, styles make fights. That's all we got for right now, everybody. Like I said, special shouts out to all of you for allowing us and helping us and aiding us and get our word out there into the world and the boxing public. Until next time, be blessed at God's speed at 200,000, that quarter million mark. This is Master Boxing. And AKA, you're watching the fight show, Hagla Hearns. So long, and remember to share the post. We'll see you next time. Peace out.